An anathema is one of the many results of the engineer's genetic accelerants, mutagenic effects on a human being. Extremely dangerous and contagious, anathemas present a major threat to anyone within their vicinity. The project recently obtained a large amount of data from Project Life Force that has shed further light on the creature known as the anathema. And so in today's data log, that's what we will be exploring. An anathema is something generated after exposure to the engineer's genetic accelerant, chemical agent AO-3959X.91-15. And while it could in its early stages be compared to some form of creature, it's really more of a physical sickness that symptoms all combine in order to give the appearance of the emergence of a new species. Once the anathema infection begins within a host, the result is terminal. Once the anathema infection starts, your fate is sealed. And so you had best get your affairs in order and fast. The real danger that an anathema poses though is the fact that it can spread its affliction to other organisms that come into contact with it. Meaning that while these creatures are roaming around free, they can continue to spread their disease to other otherwise healthy organisms. An anathema has to endure cellular disruptions that worsen over time, eventually leading to complete and utter DNA disintegration. When in its later stages, the anathema becomes a twisted creature driven by sheer aggression. An anathema is nothing to take lightly and should be treated with the same respect as any deadly disease carrier, pathogen transmission method, or deadly alien organism across the middle heavens. Before we explore the characteristics and stages of this affliction and metamorphosis in detail, I thought I had better introduce the examples of anathemas that have been documented across the middle heavens as of the time of making this data log. During the year 2093, surrounding the events of Project Prometheus and the USCSS Prometheus, one Dr. Charles Holloway would find himself on the moon LV223 in the Zeta-2 Reticuli star system, searching with the crew of the Prometheus for evidence of the enigmatic engineer race. And while they would come to find it, it would ultimately cost Holloway his life. Holloway was deliberately infected with a sample of the engineer's genetic accelerant by the rogue android David 8. Holloway's infection subsequent mutation took longer than usual due to David giving him only a single drop of the accelerant that was diluted in a glass of alcohol. Nevertheless, within a day, Holloway eventually took on the symptoms of a stage 1 and eventually the stage 2 anathema before he was quarantined and killed by Meredith Vickers with a flame unit, killing him and ending the grave threat that he presented. Since then, anathemas have since been recorded across the area of space known as the Advance, and with that the wider frontier regions. With the mysterious group known as the Border Bombers moving around the Middle Heavens, bombing various worlds with the engineer's genetic accelerant, anathemas have become a very ever more present danger. Anyone on the worlds attacked, such as LV038 or the Ariakas colony, who were not killed in the initial bombing attacks, would have their hands full dealing with these horrific diseased creatures. Project Life Force has capitalized on the rise of the number of these creatures, as well as how easy they are to create in order to study them in detail. And so a large amount of data on their stages come from the illegal experiments and observations conducted by themselves, which was recovered by the project, by our agents. Like all the creatures created by or linked to the accelerant and the species Xenomorph XX121, the anathema will progress through a number of stages before reaching its final destination, so to speak. The stage one is a vitiate or an afflicted. After a victim comes into contact with a certain smaller amount of the engineer's genetic accelerant, they will begin the process of transforming into the first stage of an anathema, a vitiate or otherwise known as an afflicted. The main symptoms of this stage are mild disorientation, weakness, paranoia, and delirium. 
On top of this, the victim's eyes might become red and watery. An afflicted stage anathema will also appear largely normal. This makes them extremely dangerous, as in this state, they can begin to spread the anathema affliction or other sicknesses that arise from their affliction. The prime example we have of this was in the case of Dr. Holloway in 2093. He engaged in sexual intercourse with his partner Dr. Elizabeth Shaw whilst in the first stage. The danger in this case originated from his own microbiome. The microbiome being a collection of microorganisms that live on and inside the human body. As these microbes were also afflicted by the accelerant, they were mutated into worm-like creatures. During the two doctors' intercourse, at least one of these creatures was able to pass into Shaw's uterus, where it would eventually develop into the trilobite creature documented on LV223. The second stage of an anathema, the ague or the febrile, is where the symptoms begin to rear their ugly head. Beginning with intense fear, pain and convulsions, things only get worse as the victims begin to hemorrhage and bleed internally. It's at this stage where the infected and all of those around them become very aware of the febrile stage symptoms. Varicose veins spread rapidly across the body as their skin discolors and deteriorates as the victim's eyes turn opaque. Like stage 1, anathemas in the febrile stage are highly contagious. More so than stage 1 and should be avoided at all cost. Quarantined or preferably immediately destroyed. This would be the best stage to do so, as you can definitely confirm the validity of the victim being an anathema just by observing it, and at this point the anathema has not yet lost their mind, so they might be easier to deal with. For all intents and purposes, they are still the person they were, however if left to continue mutating, that won't last very long. Moving on to the third anathema stage, the Lucus, or what has been nicknamed the Freak, we see an abomination type creature begin to develop from the febrile. A freak lives in constant pain and agony, as its cells are being constantly mutated, as its DNA continues to change and become ever more unstable. This all fuels the victim's transformation both physically and mentally into a creature of pure rage, attacking any living thing on sight in their path. The Freak has a number of specific and deadly attacks it can use whilst in pursuit of its prey. It can let out a wild howl and strike fear into the prey's heart. Its physical strikes are both devastating and its savagery is unmatched. It will gouge its fingers into victims' eyes, violently beat them, and has even been viewed bear-hugging its victims, crushing them, squeezing them to death. Similar to an abomination, the freak will see its head begin to deform into strange shapes, as well as having its limbs elongate and twist about. On top of this, they also possess the ability to use tools and weapons, a display that proves that by this stage, the creature still holds on to something of its past life. But at this stage, it isn't much. The final stage of the anathema, the nocuus, uh, which is also known as the terminal, is a very fitting name for this stage. It fits the bill quite nicely. At this point, the anathema begins to die, as you can observe its flesh and tissues darken and flake away. Following this, its bones will eventually become so brittle that they snap and break. Any remaining cells in the body of the anathema reach a critical mass and burst forth a mutagenic sludge, filled with the engineer's accelerant that has been reproducing throughout the anathema's many stages. The final steps in the process sees the victims completely break away, disintegrating in the process and releasing a large amount of the airborne version of the engineer's genetic accelerant. This allows for the process to begin again as this newly introduced accelerant can infect other organisms either mutating them or infecting them, possibly turning them into new anathemas. 
All currently observed anathemas have been human in origin. However, it's very likely that any organism could be quite easily be afflicted with the anathema infection. An anathema is generated after an organism, for example, a human, is subjected to or exposed to the engineer's genetic accelerant. It's important to note that the specific quantity of the accelerant that they come into contact with will help determine what stage of an anathema uh, infection they will begin to suffer from and how long they will have to live, as well as how long it will take for the onset of each of the known symptoms to begin. Using an accelerant aerospace bombardment as an example, we can show just how rapidly and at what stages an anathema will develop from an infected victim, depending on their distance from the bombardment's initial impact. Within the first kilometer, automatic petrification sets in. And so at this range, you don't have much to worry about as any living thing within this range will proceed to vomit black fluid, their bodies will convulse and twist apart until their DNA and their cells are destroyed, leaving behind only a statue-like husk of what they once were. Within the one to two kilometer range, there is about a 50-50 chance that a victim will either suffer automatic petrification or become a terminal anathema, which will disintegrate rapidly after the fact. Moving into the 2 to 4 kilometer mutation zone, all organisms are infected by the accelerant, with a large chunk being immediately advanced to the stage 3 freak anathemas. Past the 4 kilometer range, any living creature that makes contact with the accelerant, no matter how small the amount, will begin to suffer the effects, possibly becoming a stage 1 or 2 anathema. The project in closing would like to reiterate that an anathema is one of the most dangerous xenoforms ever encountered amongst the worlds of the middle heavens. Not only is the freak stage extremely physically dangerous, but every stage of an anathema is capable of spreading deadly and contagious pathogenic organisms and substances. An anathema is not something you want or should try to attempt to face head on. Like is with most xenoforms around the middle heavens, you're best to avoid them at all costs. And if you can't, get your incinerator units and hope that you don't accidentally breathe in any of the accelerant. Or you might just end up on the wrong end of that incinerator. Before you close off this transmission, I want to show you the Acheron Colonial Marketplace. The one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merchandise. All proceeds go to fund our future endeavours under the project. So if you want to support the project and look good at doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other data logs would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions to be answered, please leave them down in the comments or contact me through the LV426 Discord or the LV223 subreddit. If you really want to support what we do here and gain access to a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dussinger, Company Representative The Sixness, and team members Raunchy, Ambrosia, and The Ryan Smee. I hope to see and hear from you all again very soon. Project Acheron, bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.